Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kiku, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of a focus on the hardware side of things like most of our videos, today we're actually going to be looking at something software related. In particular, we are looking at Sapphire's Trix Boost feature. So Trix Boost is part of Sapphire's latest update to its Trix GPU utility, and in a nutshell, it lets you set a custom resolution scale for your games, which therefore increases frame rates as you can lower the resolution by between 5 and 30%. Setting a custom resolution is only half of the Trix Boost equation, however, as it also works in tandem with Radeon Image Sharpening, or RIS. This works to simply sharpen up the final image, so it should hopefully try and bring back some of that detail which would otherwise be lost when going for a lower custom resolution. So in this video, I wanted to see just how well does this feature work? Is it worth using? And if you've got a Sapphire graphics card, is it maybe something you should dive in and enable? So first we're gonna look at the software itself and how you can configure Trix Boost, but then we're gonna focus on some image quality comparisons, looking at a native 4K footage and comparing that to a game session set with an 85% resolution scale with RIS enabled. Lastly, at the end, we will also look at the performance benefits you can get when using Trix Boost. Diving into the Trix software now, we can see that Trix Boost has its own tab. The first thing you're gonna know is this resolution scale slider here. This is basically what Trix Boost does to create a custom resolution when you're gaming. This can be adjusted from 95% all the way down to 70% at its lowest value. You can see as we're moving that scale as well, it's adjusting the active resolutions below. So we're gonna choose 4K and 1440p, and you can see after the 4K option, it says in-game select 3264 by 1836. So that is effectively the custom resolution that has been created by Trix when we use this resolution scale slider. The last thing to note is there is also a toggle for Radeon image sharpening. So that is basically tricks giving you an easy way to turn this on and off without having to dive into Wattman every single time. So then if we go and hit apply, another window will pop up saying applying display changes. The screen will flicker, mine went black for a second. Uh, and that's actually when the screen capture failed. But that is basically all you need to do to enable Trix Boost. Just how good does it look when we're comparing it to native resolution? We're gonna find out now. Diving into Metro Exodus then, we're gonna go through and play the benchmark off so we've got the side-by-side -side comparison, but we're also gonna pause the video and look in a little bit more detail when we get to some interesting areas to kind of discuss the visual differences between the two implementations. So here, just as we go into the hut, the area I really wanna focus on here is the flowers in the background. You can kind of see them just sitting in their vase. So if we go ahead and zoom into that particular area, if we focus on the flowers first, it's interesting that actually I really don't think there's much of a visual difference between the footage at native 4K and then the downscale footage with RIS enabled. They actually look very, very similar. And I really don't think you could tell the difference between the two in a blind comparison. If we do just sift our eyes over to the left, however, you can see there is some wooden paneling. It's got some kind of cracks in it. And here I do think there is a slight difference with the native 4K option looking just a little bit crisper, just a little bit cleaner as well, whereas the downscaled option does look ever so slightly soft. But remember, this is zoomed in to 200%, so it is a very minor difference and definitely a good initial impression for the Trix Boost feature. Jumping ahead now to another section of the benchmark, we're gonna pause here and focus on the candle as well as kind of the little wooden stand it is on. So if we go ahead and zoom in just to get a closer look at things, I think the first point to really notice is just that the outline of the flame itself on the version of the benchmark with the image sharpening enabled definitely has a slightly firmer, definitely a slightly bolder overall outline to the flame. We can also see this on the edge of the kind of the little wooden section, whatever it is the candle is actually sitting on. You can see it has much more of a defined edge with the Radeon image sharpening enabled versus the native 4k option and that would be the contrast adaptive algorithm doing its job and actually working very well with the RIS enabled with Trix Boost. 
If we go ahead and carry on running the benchmark though, I think my main overall point to make is that it is actually quite hard to tell the difference when kind of both windows are in motion. So if you're just playing the game, you're running around, you're not kind of stopping and looking for particular things to kind of analyze like we are here. It's actually very hard to tell the difference between the two. That said, if we go ahead and pause now, just looking at this foliage, it's another in interesting comparison where we can see a little bit more of that sharpened effect kind of on the grass itself. It just kind of, each little blade looks slightly overdefined in my opinion, but like I said, again, it's not very noticeable at all. The overall quality is definitely impressive despite the 85% resolution scale. There is maybe a touch of the slightly over sharpened about each of the grass stems, but other than that, it is actually quite impressive to look at just what you can get here with an 85% resolution scale, and then trying to bring back the detail with that sharpening filter. That does pretty much sum up the experience I had using Trix Boost with Metro Exodus. We're now going to move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider just to give you a few more examples of the kind of image quality comparisons. But by and large, the initial trend we saw in Metro Exodus continues here. So starting at the very beginning of the benchmark, the first thing I really want to point out is as the camera pans around Lara, we can get a good look at some of her hair. This is definitely one of the first issues I noticed in terms of the image sharpening. So you can clearly see there, firstly on the right hand side, the overall look of Lara's hair is definitely quite over sharpened. It looks a little bit too artificial and it also looks a bit more noisy in terms of the digital noise of the overall RIS effect. And then on top of that, we also have what appears to be some kind of hair artifact. I've never been too keen on the way hair is done in Shadow of the Tomb Raider in the first place, but we can clearly see see on the right hand side along Lara's jawbone there's a little bit of what appears to be just a tuft of hair kind of just hanging off the rest of her hair so it definitely looks a little bit odd but then again like we already said the hair definitely looks a bit more natural when we're playing with the native scaling with tricks boost off. If we jump ahead now to another section of the benchmark run, here we can see what is actually a pretty easy to spot difference between RAS off and RAS on. In particular, we're focusing on the sign here and you can really see the sign on the right hand side with the Trix Boost enabled. It definitely has a much sharper look about it. You can, in fact, I probably think it's probably a little bit over sharpened just in that the kind of the outline of the text itself just looks a little too sharp, a little artificial, I guess is the word I'm looking for. On top of that, we can also again see Lara's hair with the image with radiant image sharpening enabled, definitely looking too over sharpened and again looking too artificial. If we do zoom out again though, it does become quite clear that these differences are actually quite hard to spot. It's only when we are actually going ahead and zooming in to kind of nitpick all the different features that we start to notice the difference in image quality. If we just run the benchmark on again, it really does become a lot harder to tell the differences when the images are side by side. Jumping ahead now to the end of the shadow of the two Raider benchmark we're just going to give a couple of final examples although I think at this point we have touched on pretty much most of the most obvious differences if we stop here though we can see a couple of things so why don't we zoom in closer and the first thing I noticed here actually was the difference in the kind of green cloth you can see it's got this kind of white pattern but that definitely looks a lot bolder and I think more well defined when we have the tricks boost enabled and then the radiant image sharpening is really doing again it's a adaptive contrast algorithm. So it really makes that white pattern actually kind of pop out a bit more versus the native 4K option, which looks a little bit more subdued. One other thing I did notice though was the straw in the background. And here again, I do think we are getting a little bit of that over sharpened look, which we do get from RIS as the image at native 4K definitely looks a little bit softer. And I think probably a little bit more pleasing to the eye. In the image on the right, you can really make out, you know, kind of each individual piece of straw and it does look just a touch artificial. If we go ahead and give one final comparison now, I'm gonna pause it here where we've just kind of gone around the ladies kind of kneeling on the ground. And here we can see a big difference between the two images, particularly when we focus in on the lady's face. The native 4K option just looks so soft. You can barely make out the lady's features, whereas the image with the Trix Boost enabled and RIS turned on, she looks so much sharper. It's definitely a much more pleasing image. I would say though that the hair when we've got the RS enabled again doesn't look too good. I think for me that's probably one of the worst aspects of Shadow of the Tomb Raider's graphics. 
But we'll end on a much more positive note, just simply looking at the lady's face and the features. Even gaming at 85% resolution scale with RIS enabled, the lady just looks so much sharper. So that is, in my book, a definite win for Trix Boost and RIS. So that is pretty much it for our look at the differences in visual quality between Trix Boost and native resolution. But what about the performance? Well, in a nutshell, we saw significantly increased frame rates when moving from the native resolution at 4K, then downscaling to 85% and enabling RIS. So starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we actually saw frame rates go from 44.3 frames per second on average, all the way up to 57.9 frames per second. And that works out as a 31% performance increase. We actually saw the exact same performance uplift when we tested Deus Ex Mankind Divided as well. There our average frame rate rose from 41.3 frames per second up to 54.1. So again, another 31% performance increase. Frame rates didn't increase as much in Metro Exodus when going from native 4K to the Trix Boost 85% resolution scaling, but we still saw frames per second increase from 36 on average up to 44.6, and that works out as a 24% performance uplift. So that has pretty much been it for our look at Sapphire's Trix Boost feature. One thing I do want to make clear is that Sapphire hasn't really kind of pioneered this radical new way of playing games. There have been other ways to set custom resolutions in the past and some games actually have you know resolution scaling built in. What Trix Boost does do very well though is make it very very easy for you to simply set a custom resolution. All you need to do is go into the software, adjust the slider between 70 to 95% of your native image, and then you can also toggle RIS on and off. And the end result, I think, is actually a surprisingly good looking image which shows only minimal image quality degradation versus a native 4K footage as we have seen in this video. The one caveat for Trix Boost at the moment is that currently you can only use Radeon image sharpening with DX9, DX11 or Vulkan titles. You can still set a custom resolution for your DX12 games using Trix Boost, you just won't be able to enable Radeon image sharpening for those games. Currently it would be up to AMD to implement RIS support for DX12 titles, so there's not really a whole lot Sapphire can do about that, but depending on the games you play, it is something to bear in mind. That is basically it for our look at Sapphire's Trix Boost though, so if you enjoyed this video you can toss us a thumbs up. If you do have a Sapphire graphics card and you've already checked out Trix Boost, or maybe you've just watched this video and you're going to be interested in checking it out now, do leave us a comment below and let us know your thoughts. If you like this t-shirt I've been wearing as well, we've got a link to our merch store down below. And lastly, if you'd like to get access to some of our videos early, as well as get access to exclusive giveaways, you can consider backing us on Patreon. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic Fawkett Guru and I'll see you in the next video.